Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Filippi. Uh, this is going to be a fast talk about uh, fixed income uh, pricing uh, with Julia, right? Uh, just a little disclaimer, this is our, my own views and not the views of my employer, which is the Brazilian Development Bank. It's okay with that out of the, out of the way. A uh, little bit of my background, I'm a computer nerd. Guess I'm not the only one in this room, right? Uh, I'm interested in finance. Uh, my current job is as a, a market risk manager at the Brazilian Development Bank. Uh, I lead a small team to define and implement pricing modules, and we also execute the pricing routines for all uh, the bank's portfolio, which is a pretty huge portfolio. Uh, been, use, uh, been using Julia for two years now. Um, so, the problem. Uh, the problem I'm going to show here is to price a big portfolio of fixed income contracts. Okay, that's kind of boring. Oh, fast. Okay, now that's ex exciting, right? Uh, uh, the database has about 2.4 million contracts uh, 70, uh, spread into 78 uh, million cash flows. It's about 17 gigabytes of uncompressed CSV format uh, to, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, it's about, that's more than uh, $150 billion in book value according to public data. Uh, so as a market risk guy, what was available to me? Well, uh, a tax editor, right? Uh, my point here is that I, I had no dev, dev tools. Um, uh, usually the dev tools are to the IT guys. So uh, this, is, this was a, a game changer. I managed to write a Docker file to build a Jupyter server. Uh, it's a single Docker image that has the Jupyter, right? The, the Julia, Python, and R. Um, and it's, not, it's a single image. It's not the best practice for Docker, but my goal was to minimize the number of interactions with the IT team, so it works for me. Okay. Um, uh, the results, straight to the results. Um, it takes about uh, 20 minutes to transform the CSV files into a, a Julia native uh, database using Julia serializer. Uh, so the 17 gigabytes of, of data gets shrinked into four gigabytes of compressed uh, files. Uh, there's still a lot of room of improving improvement, but uh, since this is done only once, uh, uh, I'll improve it later. So the big result is this one. It takes uh, 3.5 minutes to price everything from an empty Julia session, including the I.O. operations, the database operations, and everything. Uh, and in my experience, this is 10 times faster than the current corporate systems. Uh, I've, I've been around for 10 years now into banking, so that's, that's my experience. But for me, that's, that's not the biggest deal. The biggest deal is that there was just not possible for me to do that without Julia because of my restrictions, right? I just have the text editor. And <laughs> so uh, I'll go into the design of the solution, uh, some ideas I used to tackle the problem. Uh, some of them, uh, Julia is just uh, nice to use, you know. I don't use any uh, macro uh, complicated stuff. I just use simple stuff, but since you can write for loops in Julia, that makes all the difference and makes everything, uh, all these strategies possible. So I try to minimize I.O. operations by using memory buffers. Uh, I make use of Julia parallel computation features. Um, I minimize memory allocation by using iterators instead of allocating vectors. Uh, I minimize indirection. I may be wrong in this one, but uh, I, I try to minimize indirection by using uh, immu immutable types when it's possible. So when you have a vector of immutable, immutable types, should be a, a chunk of data, right? Uh, and I transform the CSV files into native uh, Julia data files. So uh, the solution uh, components, uh, I'm going to talk 
briefly about interest rates and business days, which are the GitHub uh, packages av available. The other ones is very specific to my problem, so I just talk, ab talk about the design of the solution. So I have uh, in, uh, a market data module, with his, uh, which is a database of uh, historical prices, a contract module, with d which defines the contract, uh, the uh, data structure of the contract, and a pricing module. Okay, so interest rates. Uh, when you're pricing a fixed cash flow, uh, sorry about the SQR. Uh, when you're pricing fixed cash flow, um, when you, uh, you want to price uh, the, the price P, the price P of uh, cash flow that pays N on time capital T uh, is N times a discount factor, uh, which depends on R, which is the interest rate, and T, which is the maturity of the contract. Uh, given R and capital T, you still have to know two things, which are how you count time and how is the discount factor defined. And these are uh, conventions, right? Uh, there's not uh, science to it. It's just, uh, in my point of view, it's just conventions. And this package implements all those conventions and makes it easier for, for, for you to apply them. So uh, there are a few day count conventions, so how you count time. Sometimes you make the actual days and divide it by uh, 360, that's uh, in your fraction, and the other ones are just like that. You have a compounding type. Some t uh, most uh, uh, financial models, pricing models like Black and Scholes use continuous compounding, but when you look at market data, you almost never look at this kind of convention. Uh, market data uses mostly simple, sim uh, simple compounding or exponential compounding, and you have to go between uh, back and forth these conventions in order to use properly your pricing model, so this is important. Uh, the package also, also uh, has a, a term structure, which is just a function that, given a time t, it gives you the interest rate for that time t. Uh, since since it's not feasible to observe prices for every maturity, you just observe, observe a few points and you have to fill in the gaps with some interpolation model or term structure model. And the package provides a whole range of uh, 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 commonly used uh, uh, models for interpolation and also uh, term structure models like this Vensel model. So just uh, as an example, uh, given a set of points of uh, spot interest rates uh, using the package, you can, define, you can define how you want to interpolate it and everything, all the conventions, and the output is the, f the full, uh, you can ask uh, the spot rate for an arbitrary maturity. There's also a memoize-like curve which stores, uh, buffers the result of, uh, of the discount factor calculation in an uh, optimized way. So you do it once, you do it twice, it will use the cached value. And it makes a big performance hit, uh, makes a, a big performance uh, improvement. Uh, okay, business days is just business days calculation and, and it's all convention. There are very different uh, uh, holiday calendars for each country and everything. But the cool thing about this one is that um, it has a built-in cache also. So uh, this line up here, it, this benchmark takes about 38 minutes to complete on Quantlib and it takes uh, less than a second on this uh, simple Mac computer. Uh, that, that makes all the difference, you know, in, in you, when you look at corporate systems, they just don't think about these things, so that's why there is low. Uh, so, uh, pricing design. Uh, it's, uh, I, I saw the, 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 the Miletos uh, solution, it's, and it's like the same design I did, 
And I, I also know another package that does something really uh, like it. But what's cool about Julia is that model has a type, so uh, you can use multiple dispatch to select the correct implementation of price function. Also, uh, on my design, model has all the market data you need to price something, so there's no I.O. operation on this. And contract is just the data structure for your contract. Okay, the data and the pricing steps. Uh, first, you get a contract or an iterator of contracts. Then there's this uh, infer pricing model key, which is uh, given a contract, uh, which is the key of the pricing model. It's just a unique identifier for the pricing model, but it doesn't have any uh, market data inside, so there's, there's no I.O. operation. And once you have a model key, you can get the pricing model from the model key, and that's the uh, only uh, piece of code that does I.O. operation. After you loaded a contract, uh, you get the pricing model for that contract, and you do that only once into, uh, you do that only once uh, for uh, each distinct value of the model key, and then you price it. Okay, uh, the contract type is specific to your problem, so I won't go into it. Uh, the pricing method uh, for a fixed income contract is very straightforward, and it's, it's cool to see how, uh, uh, how many lines of code it takes to do it. Uh, I use the Julia native serializer with G JZIP, so this is just a, an example, a simple example. You can uh, go on my GitHub account and download these this slides for you if you want to check it out. Uh, also for pricing in parallel, I made this, uh, I divided the, the database into different chunks, so uh, you, you, you should uh, uh, get the slides for you and go into detail if you wanted to, to do it, but uh, the concept is that I, I, I divide the database into many uh, different files and uh, each process that will price just the chunks allocated to that process. So that's how I do the parallel computation. It's, it's very straightforward and I think it's very much like the solution you gave to the Julia DBs thing, I guess, but I, I don't use any any of those packages. Okay, so to uh, the conclusion, uh, the, the takeoff of this is that uh, Julia is closing the gap between business users and IT users and IT developers, and that's, that's a trend. Uh, and I see there are many opportunities in the banking industry for Julia, okay? Thank you. <laughs>